Fifteen students from Tom Hood School in East London are going on an exchange trip with a difference. They're on their way to Cornwall, taking part in the second leg of an exchange programme with students from a rural school in Camelford. The main thing really was just to experience a different lifestyle and to, to meet and make friends with, with kids their age who, who, who they have a lot in common with, but as I said, very different lifestyle. For some of them, it's their first time out of London. The first country air. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, the horses. Horses is just saying you don't see in London often. Or only police. Or only like police is when they're on patrol on, on the road and all that. Farm life is normal for them. Like, to us, that seems rich, really rich to us. But I don't know, they might, might not be as rich as they seem. The first part of the exchange took place before this trip when students from the rural Sir James Smith Community School in Cornwall came to spend a week with the London School. I thought they were going to be like London chads, gangsters, you know, not talking to us, hoodies, knives, guns, you know, they're kind of like London stereotype thing. They're, they're all really nice people. I was talking on the bus earlier and um, they were surprised that I've got a rifle in my room. A rifle? Yeah. Okay then, okay, that is, that is surprising. It wouldn't be normal for us because if we, if we had a rifle in our room, we would get, the police would be around our house taking it off us. But normally in Cornwall, I'd say you had to kill birds. Now it's time for the London students to experience the realities of life as a rural teenager. Yeah, phones off, not on silent, completely off, because we're going into a school. Hats off when we go into the school. Oh, I missed you. Oh, I missed you so much. How are you? I'm all right. Has everybody been okay? <laughs> Okay, first of all, I'd just like to welcome Tom Hood. You've had a great journey out here. You looked out of the window when you went past Exeter and saw the sea. Fantastic. Welcome to you guys, especially. In a very monocultural part of the world that, that we were interested in um, giving our students the opportunity to meet students from other parts of the country. Just that opportunity to, to, to meet and try to understand the different way people live and the different cultures that people come from. And for the students from London as well to come down here and to, and to, and to get some understanding of um, a completely rural setting. I, I want you to know that we had a fantastic time when we were in London and we want to give you an equally fantastic time when you're down here. I am praying praying that the weather is really good tomorrow and Wednesday for the outdoor activities. Welcome. The students have been sent on a quick tour of the school. But we definitely don't have tarantulas though. They soon find themselves the centre of attention. They were mobbed like celebrities at the school break time this morning. It was a little bit overwhelming for some of them. They said it was quite embarrassing, but the Cornish kids were being genuinely nice and genuinely interested in, in who they were and what they were up to. Uh, a couple of boys have signed autographs for some of the Cornish pupils, which they're, they're just, just amused by, really. The Howard pupils don't really see themselves as being culturally diverse because where they live, that's just the norm. They just assumed, and they, they may be right, it was just because they were from London that they were, they were interesting to, to meet. They're like gangsters and stuff. Like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, like 
like slang and stuff. Like, it's quite cool. Well, I never, we never really see London people. Like, so, I don't know, just talk to people about what their school finds like. The difference can ask them. I think that obviously there were preconceptions, but what we what we worked on here was getting students to think about what was special about Cornwall, what was different about Cornwall, and made our students and the students in Tom Hood think about well, how do you present yourself? How do you present yourself visually? How do you present yourself in the way that you talk? What do you say about yourself to say this is me, and not just this is me, but this is my community, this is my area, this is my home. The London and Cornish students are sharing a drama class. They're going to take part in a very Cornish tradition, storytelling. I thought it would be nice to choose something that was uh, steeped in kind of Cornish history and to maybe just have a look, little look at Cornwall and how full of um, legends and pirate stories and things that it is. We are going to tell our story of Jan Tregeagle, a most the most possibly most terrible man that has ever, ever lived in Cornwall, ever. Jan Tregeagle's quite a famous story. It's got lots of dramatic sort of possibilities, which is why I tried to get them doing as many different techniques to tell the story. After he lent you money, you went and bought a car. What proof do you have that is his? The day that I lent him 500 pounds, Tregeagle was there to see. I wish to God that he come now and declare it. Mm -hmm. Young people are very similar, really, and enjoy the same things and enjoy working with each other um, pretty open-mindedly, really, which is something we could all do with doing a bit more of sometimes. Children find aspects of each other to latch onto very quickly. So, James Smith School students, I want you to do us a, a, and our guests a big, big favour. When you get home tonight, please, can you search through, ask permission, obviously, search through your homes and bring as many pairs of Wellington boots that you can possibly find uh, into school tomorrow. They look like four or five. Try those. Are these a size eight? They look quite big. They're massive. Oh. <laughs> The farm, which is Alice's farm, one of the girls who's been chosen um, to do the exchange. Um, uh, it was her dad who was um, like showing us around and all that, and the chickens were so funny. And again, these grew up to be quite big animals, and they make 40 or 50 pounds each at Christmas. OK, so they're quite a nice uh, little Christmas bonus for us on the farm, to a little geese and turkeys. You're on! <laughs> We went to this farm today, proper massive, like sick. Um, you get to see how, I mean, I, I, I've never seen a real cow in my life in front of me. As an organic farmer, I'm allowed to keep 28 fat cows in this barn during the winter. OK, that's the rule, no more than 28. As a conventional farmer, I'm allowed to keep one for every squat four square metres. So 200 divided by four is... I don't think we need our phones. 50. The actual farm animals themselves don't make an awful lot of money. Um, in fact, it's debatable whether they make any money at all at the moment. I thought, like, they'll be so rich, have, have, like, plenty of horses, loads of money and everything. But when you find out the reality that it's, it's like that to be a farmer, it's, it's different from everyone else's life, it's unique, so you need to get used to it before you want to be like organic farmer.
The students from London have now become familiar faces to the locals and they're both getting used to saying hello to each other. It's really nice for kids to come and to personally change people's ideas of what London teenagers or black teenagers or people of minorities are like and that they, you know, our kids are intelligent, articulate and well-mannered so it's nice to say, well, these, this is the reality, this is the majority of, of teenagers, the, the, what you hear about in the media are a small minority. Okay, it's, it's part, of, part of everyone's daily lives if you, if you live in London and street crime is, is an issue for us and it's something that they almost take for granted really that it's quite depressing that they don't, they won't walk down the street with their phone or their iPod out in Leytonstone because you put, you're just putting yourself at risk. Whereas for the Cornish kids, They've told, they've told our pupils that you can walk down the street with your phone and say hello to someone and they'll say that you don't know and they'll say hello back to you. And our kids were pretty astonished that that was, that was how people operated here. They can actually walk across like the street and say hi to somebody they don't even know. But in, like, in London, you can't just go up to someone you don't even say hi. It's a bit odd. Over here, like, you have to like, go inside early in case anything happens. And it's like harder here because you can't go certain places night time because it's dangerous but over there like they describe they can go anywhere where they want it's it's nice to see them just let loose their inhibitions and just enjoy themselves and, and be just be kids really for a week it's the sort of bedrock of what you should do with students in schools. I think that they've got to have the skills to be able to deal with people, take risks, be employable, be in relationships. And, and I think that this sort of experience will help phenomenally. I know, that's exactly what I was saying. Stuff that is similar about us Londoners and the Cornwall people is that, you know, we're all kids really, we all act like kids. We all hang out, go out, get in trouble, you know. All kids do that once in a while in their lifetime, so that's what we do. They weren't shy and they weren't pushy, they were just bright. And, that, and they said that they, that's what they thought of us as well. I miss everybody. I love Cornwall. I love those people. They've got really lov lovely personalities. And it's, it's going to be horrible to um, go, go away for a while, but we'll keep in touch, definitely. I would love to think that there might be some relationships which would be sustained. But that'd be great. I mean, we all, we've all got memories of, of, our, of our childhood, and I hope this is a really good, vibrant, poignant, memory for a lot of these kids. Oh, we should do it twice every single year. Yeah. yeah. I second that. I'm going to be so I jealous of the next year eight go up. And we're not allowed to go. Don't even go there.